All right, hopefully everybody can hear sound um, with this video. If they don't, hopefully they can read the sign and get the sound working. So, um, this is a lesson um, out of the Chapter 3 Study Guide in Geometry. On Chapter 3, Section 1, Part 2, otherwise known as 312. Um, on this section, we're going to be talking about a lot of different types of angles where you can compare two different angles um, in different positions, different intersections of lines, and uh, they can be classified in certain ways. So uh, the, really the only new def definition that we need is um, of a transversal. A transversal is a line and intersects two or more other lines. So for example, if you had a pair of parallel lines and then a third line that crosses through them, this line right here would be the transversal line. So, uh, the first definition is corresponding angles. So corresponding angles, you see here this is the transversal line. They exist at the same part of the intersection uh, when you look at two different intersections. Okay, so do you see that this angle right here is in the upper right hand corner of this intersection? And the same with this angle right here, angle six in the intersection of these two lines, it's in the upper right hand corner. So those two are called corresponding. Now, how do we find corresponding angles in this diagram? Well, I would say that angle 2 is corresponding with angle 4. You see how in this intersection here and this intersection here, they're both on the top right hand section. So angle 2 and angle 4. Um, how about angle 1? If I have angle 1, which is right here, I would say angle 3 is the one that corresponds with it because in each of these intersections is in the upper left hand portion of that intersection. So angle 1 and angle 3. I would say angle 5 is in the bottom left hand corner of this intersection along with angle 7 which is in the bottom left hand corner of that intersection. So angles 5 and 7 would be corresponding angles. And then finally angle 6 is in the bottom right hand corner of this intersection of two lines along with angle 8 which is in the bottom right hand corner of this intersection. So for that reason angle 6 and angle 8 are corresponding. Now alternate interior angles is the second concept. Alternate interior angles, I like to think of two lines kind of being a road. So if these two lines form the edges of a road and then you would have two basic areas. You would have the interior part of the road, the inside part of the road, and then anything that is above this line or below this line would be in the outside part of the road. So the cars would be driving back and forth this way, right? So if we're talking about something that's on the interior, we're, we're only talking about things that are on the inside portion of the road, not up here and down here. These are out. So alternate means that you have an angle where one's on one side of the transversal, and the other is on the other side of the transversal. That is what alternate means. It means kind of across. 
So the interior means the inside part of our road, and alternate means on the opposite sides of our transversal line. So um, two angles are alternate interior angles if they fall into that particular arrangement. Identify the alternate interior angles in this diagram. Well, if I see this as one road and this as the other side of the road, so to speak, this section right here would form the roadway. So anything outside of this would be on the exterior, that's on the outside. So angles 1, 5, 4, and 8 are out because we're strictly looking on the interior. So if you look just on the interior part, you can see we have some angles that are opposite from one another. So for example, angle 6 and angle 3 are opposite. That's called alternate. So angle 6 and angle 3 are on alternate parts of the interior of this roadway. And angles 2 and 7 are on the interior, but they are across from one another across that line. So they are alternating on the sides. So angle 2 and angle 7. And that's it. So now that you know what interior means, you probably have figured out what exterior means. If this is the sides of our roadway, and this is the interior part of the road right here, then the exterior part of the road would be anything above or below those lines. So the exterior means on the outside part of the road, so here's my road. Exterior is above and below that section. So these, there's two angles up here and two angles down there. If you have an angle here, looks like that's angle 7, and this one angle 8, those ones are on the outside part of the road, but they're on opposite sides of this line. So that means they're on the exterior, but they're alternating. So these this position here and this position down here would be on alternate sides of the line but on the outside of the road. Alternate exterior. So if this is our road, here's one side of the road here and the other side of the road there, this would be the middle of the road, right? And so the exterior angles would be 1, 5, 4, and 8, right? So is there an angle that's an exterior angle but on the alternate side of the line? Yeah, from angle 1 would be angle 8, and from angle 5 would be angle 4. So those are my only two pairs of alternate exterior angles, 1 and 8. five and four. All right, so on the next page, one last definition before we do some other examples. Consecutive interior. Okay, so again, you have the two lines that form your roadway here. Remember the interior would be anything on the road, it's on the inside of that road. And then consecutive means that you'd have two angles that are on the same side of the transversal. So you can see angles 3 and 5 are on the same side of the line going through, and they're also on the interior part of the road, not the outside part of the road. And that's what's called consecutive interior. So if these lines form the sides of my roadway and we're looking for the interior we're looking at strictly angles 2, 6, 3, and 7. Consecutive interior means that the two angles form uh, uh, they're on the same side of the line so if this is our transversal line angles 2 and 3 would be consecutive interior and angles 6 and 7 would be consecutive interior. So 
In this diagram, there's lots of possible angles. Um, they want us to tell them all the possible um, corresponding angles um, and alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles and consecutive interior. So that is a very big job. I'm just going to show you the answers for this section. Um, obviously this is written a little bit differently, but it is the same diagram. These are all the corresponding angles. 2 and 10, 1 and 9, 4 and 12, and so on the list goes. These are all the alternate interior angle pairs. These are all the alternate exterior angle pairs. And these are all the consecutive interior pairs over there. All right, and then I'm going to do the challenge practice because I do think it's interesting. Now, obviously, these get a little more confusing when there's more lines drawn in the diagram, but it doesn't mean you can't figure it out. Remember, corresponding angles are in the same general position and, uh, as each other. So if this is an intersection right here and we're talking about angle number one, corresponding angles would be in the upper left-hand portion of any intersection. So corresponding with angle one would be angle 11 and angle 17, the upper left-hand portion, yep, yeah, and angle five and in the upper left hand portion of this intersection would be 13. So angle 1 is corresponding with 5, 11, 17, and 13 because they're both in the upper left hand section of the intersection of those two lines. 13 and what are corresponding angles? Well, pretty much it's the same list, right? Because 13 was part of the list with 1. 14 and what are consecutive interior angles? 14, hmm, well, they'd have to be on the inside of something and they'd have to be um, on the same side of a transversal line. So I can see 14 is on the inside if you think of these as the sides of a road. And to be consecutive, it would have to be on the same side of a transversal, this being the transversal. I would say 14 and 17 are consecutive interior. Now, I really don't see any other ones where 14 would match uh, up with something else. Let's see. No. Oh, well, perhaps with 12. Um, if you consider this line and this line your roadway lines. And or no, these two, sorry. These two lines are your roadway lines, and that's your line crossing through. Then 14 and 12 could be consecutive interior as well. Uh, name angles that are consecutive interior with number four. Number four. Well, if this line and this line formed your roadway, and then that's your transversal on top, then angles four and seven would be consecutive interior. Um, if this and this would form your roadway, and then this was the transversal, angles four and nine would be consecutive interior. Alternate interior with seven. Well, alternate interior means it's on the other side of the transversal from seven. Um, so I would say seven and 10 also, 7 and 14 would be on the alternate side of the line, but they'd be on the inside of two other lines. And there you have it.